How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're gonna take a look at gas mixtures and partial pressures, practice problems. So a couple of equations, the partial pressure of some gas is gonna to equal to the mole fraction of some gas times the total pressure, or hey, the pressure total is gonna to equal the sum of the pressures from all the different gases in the mixture. All right, so number one, what is the partial pressure of neon if 10 grams of argon and 20 grams of neon are placed in a 100 or 1200 milliliter container at 25C? So what's nice about gas mixtures is if you want the partial pressure of just one, you can just ignore the fact that there are any other gases, right? So this is your volume for that gas. This is your temperature for that gas. And this is the grams of the gas you're interested in. So the first question is, all right, well, if I have 20 grams, I need to know how many moles that is. But you know what? I like, I like putting them all together. So I know PV equals NRT. It wants to know what the pressure is. We also know that moles equals the grams divided by the GFM. So if I plug that in, I get PV equals grams over the GFM times RT. And if I'm solving for P, I got to divide each side by volume. So I end up with pressure equals the grams times RT all over uh, the GFM times volume. So that's that's going to be my setup. So now I do my math, I plug and chug, I can pick up my calculator. My grams is 20.0. My R, well, let's see the, uh, oh, I'm trying to solve for pressure. So it doesn't really, you could use, I like atmospheres. So the R I'm gonna use is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin. Sorry, that 20 is grams. And then times temperature at 25 C is 298 Kelvin. Gotta be in Kelvin divided by the GFM of neon, which is 20.18 grams per mole. And then times by the volume, 1200 milliliters, you gotta convert it to liters. So that's uh, 1.2000 liters. And I pick up my calculator, I plug and chug, beep bop, beep bop, boop, I end up with 20.2 atmospheres. So the fact that there's another gas in there, not relevant to solving for the partial pressure of just one of those gases. You can ignore the fact that there are any other gases there. Number five, I got, or two, I'm sorry. Number two, five grams of SO2 and five grams of CO2 were placed in a 750 milliliter container at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the total pressure of the container in atmospheres? So again, we got PV equals NRT. And if we want the total pressure the moles that we want to use is for, in total, all of the moles of all the gases. So in order to solve for my total moles, I need to figure out what are my moles of SO2 and what are my moles of CO2. So I do that math. All right, moles of SO2 is the grams of SO2 that I'm using divided by the gram formula mass of SO2, which, you know, TV movie magic, I found off screen to be 64.07. So I divide by 64.07 grams per mole. And for CO2, I do the same process. Hey, I also have five grams of that stuff divided by the GFM of CO2, which off screen I determined to be 44.01 grams per mole. So when I add all those together, I end up with, if I can read my own handwriting, 1.92. I think 1. Point, I'm sorry, 0. 0.192 it might be a 4. <laughs> 0. 0.192. Anyway, I could just use this. And if I plug that into my uh, PV equals NRT equation, it'd be better off. So if I want pressure by itself, it's going to equal NRT on V. So I can plug and chug. My moles is going to be that 5.00 divided by 64.07 plus the 5.00 divided by the 44.01 and R, well, if I'm using atmospheres, I need to be using the 0 0.08206 uh, and the temperature in Kelvin is gonna be 323 Kelvin because 50 C converted to that, that's what you get. Divided by the volume, um, oh, 750 milliliters, I gotta convert that to liters, so it's 0 0.750 liters. And when I plug and chug, I end up with 6.77 atmospheres. All right, number three, a mixture of xenon, krypton, and argon has a total pressure of 6.7 atmospheres. 
If the partial pressure of xenon and argon are 1.6 atmospheres and 2.8 atmospheres respectively, what is the mole fraction of krypton? So first off, we need to go, hey, I know the total pressure is gonna equal the pressure of all of these things added together. And they told me the partial pressures of two of them and the total. So if I'm trying to solve for the partial pressure of Kr, it's gonna equal the total pressure minus the partial pressure of xenon and the partial pressure of argon. So when I do that math, I get, get 2.3 atmospheres. Right, so I go, hey, my total pressure of 6.7 atmospheres minus 1.6 minus 2.8 gives me 2.3 atmospheres, and that's for krypton. Now, if I wanna know the uh, mole fraction, well, I know that the partial pressure of krypton has to equal the mole fraction of krypton times the total pressure. So I go, all right, well, um, if I'm trying to solve for Kr, the partial pressure of krypton divided by the total pressure should give me that mole fraction. So now I plug and shut. I go, hey, 2.3 atmospheres divided by the total pressure of 6.7 atmospheres. And what do I end up getting? I get 0.343, a unitless number. That's my mole fraction for uh, krypton. All right, number four, a three liter, I'm sorry, three liters of helium gas at 5.6 atmospheres and 25 Celsius was combined with 4.5 liters of neon gas at 3.6 atmospheres and 25 C at constant temperature in a nine liter flask. What is the total pressure in atmospheres of the flask? Assume the initial pressure of the flask was zero and the temperature upon mixing was 25 Celsius. So what's kind of really difficult about this is, you know, hey, PV equals NRT, fine. But we want the total pressure so we need the total number of moles. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to figure out, hey, the moles of helium based on PV equals NRT. Then we have to separately find the moles of neon using PV equals NRT again. And then three, now we gotta use the PV equals NRT equation for the total. So we're gonna pivot this three times. All right, so first time for helium, we know that moles is gonna equal RT over PV, right? That's how we had the, the, I'm sorry, that's upside down. Moles of gas is gonna equal PV over RT from the PV equals NRT equation. So if I'm doing it for just helium, I got a plug and chug for helium. So I get 5.6 atmospheres times the 3.0 liters over RT, 0.08206 times the temperature of 298. Please excuse my lack of units, but I'm gonna run out of room. So I get 0.687 moles of helium. So now I gotta do the same thing, but for neon. Moles of neon equals PV on RT for neon. So I look at neon, it says 3.6 atmospheres, 25C, uh, 4.5 liters. So the pressure, 3.6 atmospheres times my volume of 4.5 liters divided by 0 0.08206 for my R times my temperature of two, I'm sorry, 298 Kelvin. And when I do that math, I end up with 0.662 moles of neon. Now my total moles is gonna be those two added together, 0.687 plus 0.662, and I end up with a total moles of 1.349 moles of gas. So now my last step is I'm gonna to have to PV equals NRT it again, and what am I solving for? The final pressure, so I know that pressure equals NRT on V. So my total moles is at 1.349 moles times my R of 0 0.08206 times my temperature at 298 all over my volume and the new flask is nine liters, 9.0 liters. So now I pick up my calculator, beep bop, beep bop, boop, and I end up with 3.7 atmospheres as my final answer. So kind of a three or four part question, right? First part, solve for the moles of uh, for helium. How, how much helium was that? Second step, how much neon was that? Now I can figure out my moles total. 
Now I can pivot nerd it to get my final answer. All right. Number five. Sodium hydroxide reacts with water to produce aqueous sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Following this balanced equation. There it is. How many grams of NaH will produce 982 milliliters of a gas at 28 Celsius and 765 torr when the hydrogen is collected over water? It says the vapor pressure of water at this temperature is 28 torr. So long story short, if I'm collecting stuff over water, I have this inverted tube that was filled completely with water, and then my reaction is leaving bubbles into it, and it fills up. Now in this space, there is the gas, but there is also water vapor vaporizing so we have to account hey if i'm gonna use my pressure it needs to be just of the gas that i'm interested in so first question is what is my gas of i'm sorry what is the pressure of my h2 gas so pressure total is going to equal the pressure of the h2 gas but also the partial pressure of the water vapor so if i want the pressure of h2 gas it's going to be the total pressure minus the vapor pressure from water so when I do that math, 765 minus 28, I end up with, what do I end up with? 737 torr. That's for my H2. All right, so now I'm gonna make some more room because I'm gonna need it. Now that I got my pressure of just the hydrogen gas, now I can backtrack. I go, all right, hey, if I have my pressure, I can PV equals NRT it to solve for my moles of H2 gas. Then I can go, hey, what is my H2 to NaH ratio based on the balanced chemical equation? And then they want to know grams. So now my last step is going to be, hey, once I got moles of NaH, I got to convert that to grams. All right, so first step, PV equals NRT solving for N. I get moles equals uh, PV over RT. So my pressure for just the hydrogen gas is 737 torr times my volume, 982 milliliters, which is 0.982 liters, divided by my R, if I'm using torr, it's the 62.36 number, times my temperature at 28 Celsius is, what's that, 301 Kelvin. And when I plug and chug, and I get an answer for that, it comes out to be 0 0.03856 moles of H2 gas. Second step is, all right, my mole to mole ratio. Oh, hey, I'm not even gonna bother drawing that out because it's a, it's a, a one to one, all right? So for, that means I also have 0 0.03856 moles of NaH. But it wants it in grams, so my last step is to convert moles to grams. So I do times that by the GFM of NaH, which I'm looking, what did I get for that? Uh, 24, is that right? It comes out to be like 24 grams per mole. So when I multiply that together, I end up with 0.925 grams of NaH, which is pretty incredible. So like, about one gram of this stuff can react to give you almost a liter of volume. There you go. All right, last question in this section. Zinc reacts with aqueous sulfuric acid to form hydrogen gas following this balanced chemical equation. There it is. How many grams of zinc will produce 225 milliliters of wet H2 uh, collected over water at 27 Celsius with a pressure of 748 torr? It says the vapor pressure of water at that temperature is that many torr. So again, I need to know the pressure of just my H2. So my total pressure is gonna equal the pressure of my H2 plus the vapor pressure of the water. So if I want just H2, I gotta go, hey, uh, it's gonna be the total pressure minus the vapor pressure of the H2O. So I get 748 torr minus the vapor pressure of water is 26.74 torr. So the pressure of just my H2 gas I get is 721.26 torr. That's my pressure of H2 gas. So now that I got that, I can start to do like some stuff. This is pretty similar to the last problem. Uh, you know, I got the partial pressure of my H2, which means now I'm gonna PV equals NRT it 
where I'm going to have to solve for my moles of H2. And then the next step is going to be, hey, what is my H2 to zinc ratio? And it's nice because it's one to one in this equation. Uh, and then once I got that, then I got to convert moles of zinc to grams using the GFM. So first step, PV equals NRT solved for moles. I get moles equals PV on RT. So I, I do a little plug in and chug and the pressure is at 721.26 torr times the volume. Well, let's see, 225 milliliters is 0.225 liters divided by R. If I'm using torr, it's a 62.36 number times my temperature. Uh, 27 Celsius comes out to be um, what's it, 300 Kelvin. So when I plug and chug and I get my answer, it comes out to be 0 0.00867 moles of H2. Next step. Well, I'm not even going to draw it out. It's a one to one. So that tells me that is also the moles of zinc. I have 0 0.00. 867 moles of zinc needed to make that much H2. So now my third step, just convert that to grams. You get 0 0.00867 moles of zinc times by the gram formula mass of zinc, which is 65.39 grams per mole. That's a mole. And then I end up with 0.567 grams as my final answer. All right, I hope you found that helpful. See you in class. Goodbye.